fair use in your caboose, man. We back, man. Press the John, number 39. But before we go, love to AD, man, because this shit crazy. This shit crazy. Pues la figura del paje consta de llevarle regalos a los niños desde los camiones donde los tenemos todos recogidos hasta sus casas, subiendo por las escaleras que tenemos de madera o bien por el interior si pesan mucho o no llegan las escaleras. Y llama la atención, pero es una, un personaje para nosotros queridísimo. Eh, de hecho, si te fijas, pues estamos hablando de 440 chavales entre 16 y 18 años que con una ilusión continua y año tras año quieren salir. Es decir, son todos los adolescentes que año tras año participan de una forma activa. Son todos los colectivos juveniles los que al final conforman pues, todo este séquito de pajes que participan en la cabalgata. Who does this shit? Who does this shit? Just look at the people's eyes, man. And tell me there's not something wrong with these motherfuckers, man. Who does this shit? Who in their right mind does this shit? You see a bunch of black people trying to Put on a, a white face? Well, I guess you do. I guess you do. I guess you do. But you know what I mean. <coughs> Let's go, man. <coughs> Clearing my throat. Let me clear my throat. This shit is despicable. Para nada es un acto racista, ni es ningún, no tiene ninguna connotación racista, todo lo contrario, para nosotros ya te digo que consideramos que es un personaje muy querido y muy eh, valorado dentro de la propia cabalgata y que si fuera verdaderamente un acto racista yo creo que se, ni to, todos estos chavales no, no quisieran participar de este acto. Look at the uniforms, right? So they're right, they're in this medieval situation, right? Look at these look like execution type of thing, man. You see the fezes, obviously. You see the fezes. So they're in Spain, right? Spain. Right now. A hundred thousand at a time. In blackface. Trying to look like the black man. From where? Because when we dig on Preston John, man. You have to dig. You know, you have to dig on down on Preston John. What is the blackface all about? In Spain. Look at this. Naga nigga shield in Spain. Look at the shield. Look at the face. Look how the lips are being depicted. Right? The red. You remember? Do you remember? This shit crazy. Oh, man, look at the back. Alright. You see the black face with the red lips look at the little crowns the little crowns so they're talking about these moors but not just the moor i mean any naga that was rocking a crown and where are these negroes today where are all these negroes today Llama la atención, pero es una, un personaje. Where are you today? Where are you in these streets? How can they get away with this shit? Because they don't go to so-called black neighborhoods with this shit on, right? What would happen if they walk through Compton with this shit on? I'll wait. 
They probably get sprayed. <laughs> hey, man, this ain't no play play. You see the royalty on this shoe. Now, you need to understand and overstand and understand that there's royalty on both sides of the wall. This is the Andrews family, you know, crest up right here. You got spelled different ways. Andrews, we already got some of that before. But you see the Naga on the crest. This is the Hebrew towel. It's not a Christian cross. It's talking about wisdom. It's the conqueror of fortune. Wisdom. Ha. Wow. We're talking the Rus of Russia, Russia connected to the Mexica, to the Picks. Man, we got a great Pick series coming up. As you can see, I just can't stop. I can't turn it off. Let go. Because America is tribal. What does this have to do with Presser John and the Templar? The Naga? What does this got to do with the Priest King? El Presto one. Everything. Another Andrew's crest with the same Hebrew towel, which means the mark, the sign, the covenant. There you go. You see the top is nothing but a naga on these royal shields. So when you have these names like Andrews or whatever the case is, most of the time you already had them. And in case you forgot who you are, regardless if you're a Moabite, an Israelite, a Jebusite, whatever, you want, whatever, 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 man. At this point, we got the same similar captivity going on. At this point, we all paying taxes. So it's not about pointing the finger, I'm this, I'm better than you because I'm this. Hey, man, can't nobody prove that they this or that. All we can do is get in line, get in order. And remember, man, that while we talking about it, you know what I mean? Check them out, man. While we are talking about it, you see the fezzes. While we are talking about it, man, man, these people out here is being about this life, man. Para nosotros, queridísimo, eh, de hecho, si te fijas, pues estamos hablando de 400. I mean, they about this life, man. They about that life, man. They rocking your crowns, man. If you're a black royal, if you're a so-called black royal as a black man, whether you are an Israelite, a Moabite, or anything, anything in between, at least be royal, man. You know, while we figure this shit out between us, at least remember that you're royal. At least know that they're rocking your crowns and your faces, man. While we talking about it, they they being us, the black Africans who rule Europe. Europa is a so-called black princess, right? Huh? Remember who you are, my people, and while they try to appropriate your culture. And vulture, when we talk about Preston John, remember, they still know who you are. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, y'all want to talk about um, comic books while we're talking about this great drop from AD? You want to talk about comic books, man? Hold up, man. We on a warpath, man. Can't do this no more, man. Hold up, man. 
Vamos a dar like. 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 All these great comments, man, are, are just uh, tremendous. You know what I mean? I really appreciate, man, that y'all appreciate it. Because, again, man, America's tribal. And I want to give the appreciation to y'all for the crystallization to let me know, man, um, that this is where the heart bone is. You know what I mean? This is where I got to put my heart. This is where we got to put our heart. We got to put our, our, our stamp down on this. While well, they stamping us, right? While well, they... Using our face and stamping our face on their face and doing blackface. Man, y'all y'all got the drop because you get the drop. Love to Mr. Freeze, 1982. Con drop shouts from Pontiac, Michigan. What did it, it do, Pontiac, Michigan? This is fam. You see the profile pic almost a year ago. Yeah, he got that, that Dawoo. He got this uh, beautiful pic here. That's his profile pic. We're just talking King David, the Royals. That they're misappropriating. You forgot you, you. You forgot you, you. You forgot about the last noble image of the Negro. They ain't forget. They ain't forget. Clearly, they ain't forgot. All right, man. We on a war path, man. Let's go, man. Let's figure this out, man. No, I mean a, a frequency war, man. It's a frequency war. People always like to like who is people always like who is your profile pic. LOL, but great work. I always follow your videos, fam. Keep awakening us more. My copper brother, love to Mr. Freeze, 1982. The Templar, Irvin Reed. He got so many great videos, so much research he's done on his channel on this press to drop. So go get the press to drop. Chronology, all that great stuff going down. Dragon drop, platonic silence, all that. At Urban Reed. Because if they can't tell you when the age of the x lars ended, you may want to find Presser John. Find David, your king. Khan. Khan. Templar, love to the Templar. Yehuda, Israel, says praise the Most High. It's only it's beautiful to see the Most High works come to pass. Israel is waking up in the real truth. Love to you. Yahuda Israel. Uh Lely Gross says part thirty eight. I'm on I'm thirty seven behind. Oh, I'm on it. My sister belly flop. You don't gotta get one through thirty seven to know what we're talking about today. You know what I mean? The whole point of doing these videos is so that somebody could watch it for the first time and they don't have to necessarily go back, you know what I'm saying? Because we're gonna touch on those things again, so do that or belly flopping and, and if you enjoy the investigation you know what i mean mr mike premier says let not that weirdo squeal deter, <laughs> deter us from the present time drop oh, man as you see man the water keeps flowing bro the water keeps flowing man hey uh, uh he should be more focused with his own teaching thanks for keeping this going we need this thank you i'll key mr mike premier my sister nicole hj says shalom didn't watch yet. Got off work 5.30. Just made it home for work 6.28. But this popped up on my notifications. Really want to call it night. But really want to watch. What you going to do? All praise the most high. I'm exhausted though, man. Get your rest, sister. Get your rest. Yeah, man. Uh, Yehuda says praise the most high only. And David is prince. Is his prince. JC is Lucifer's son. New Testament is false. Yeah, man. Look, man. Um... We know that the New Testament is using phantoms and duplicates of our Joshua, but that storyline that they're making up is utter uh, bullshit, man. You know what I mean? They're making up a story intentionally to hijack you from your story. Their story is not original. It's not OG to what they're saying is happening with JC. You know what I'm saying? These are gospels. These are created versions. A lot of this stuff was created in the 1800s and even later. You just don't know how recent this stuff is. You know what I mean? So... You know, get the get the drop. There's always going to be some truth in the lie. But yeah, man, we know that they're reflecting our Joshua, but that's not our Joshua. That they are, uh, you know what I'm saying, actually putting into this, you know, doing the storyline about about being 
you know, the sacrifice for you when you were clearly sacrificed. You don't even know who you are. You are the salvation. You as a nation is the salvation. You are Preston John. You are the collective Mashiach. When you are back in your consciousness with each other, you raise this whole thing up. You know what I'm saying? You bring this back. You bring back the creator. So be you. Stop looking outside of you. Be you. La Hawa, AD, the truth seeker. Let the AD. Because this next comic book drop, comic series, is for you. Love to Ray Jeweler, Feathers, I, Copper Feathers, I caught that BA drop on the scepter. Okay, he's talking about that. Yeah, sheer. Can't wait for the staff drop. Yeah, we're going to go back in that crystal, sapphire staff. I think it's very important. I know it's coming soon to us. Let's go, man. Quitting 45 or 54. Harris said, thanks. Drop from the old man. Man, you ain't old, brother. We're going to find the fountain of you. We're going to find the fountain of you. Remember, to the black man, discover the fountain of you. We're going to find the fountain of you for my brother, Quentin, 54. You know what I mean? A couple more, man. Brandon Reese says, drop. I'm glad that you're bringing this to light, brother. Keep up the good work. Hey, hi, my brother, Brandon. Orel. Israel says, damn, the drop was good. Hey, hi, Orel. Black Neil says, the sword is in the stone. We're going to connect the staff to the store, to the sword, to the stone. Connect the staff to the sword, to the stone. Let's go. Love to D-Boy Robinson says, one love always broke the water. Shalom. Hey, hi, D-Boy. Love to Carla Randolph. She said, hawa. That's all you need to say. That's all I got to say. You exist. We exist. All right, man. And I love to T.O. Judah. He ran across something extra juicy. I think it confirms King David is about to be risen again. That's why the economy is crumbling. Amen. Amen. We're about to see something very special. And it's all about being in the right vibration. Copper color Aaron says the groundwork you're doing, big homie, is groundbreaking. Hijack's gone, say, gonna say. He's wearing a turban in the back, a uh, black and white picture, so he's really a Moorish Christian, not an Israelite king. Yeah, man, that ain't drop nation. We can see through the hijack, because one, is not an actual picture, it's a drawing, and he didn't draw it himself, nor did he commission it, you dig? So anybody could put anything on any of us right now. Somebody could make, make a drawing of you, put all kind of hijack in it. What does it mean? Oh, it means what it means, man. All right, so, hey, uh, Nido, I, I, yes, DJ says, peace and love, my brother, on the same vibe. I know we got more, man. We got to keep it pushing, man, but, hey, hi to y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? We on the war path, man. This is the frequency war, man. We need some drums, man. Where's my war drums, man? Let's fall back. Oh, yeah, we dragons on the wall, because you might need your dragons, at war against the hijack. You see this dragon is at war against the hijack. So if you're at war with the dragon and the hijack, I think you're fucked. Cause this dragon is fighting against the hijack. And always been against the hijack. Seeing clearly dragons on the wall. Let's go man. Yeah. We on the war path, man. This is a frequency war. Where's your things? America is tribal. Where's your gold? La Hua. What did Benjamin Franklin say? Pull up this link. Which leads me to one remark that's at the very bottom of observations concerning the increase of mankind. Benjamin Franklin printed and sold in Neyland, Queen Street, uh, 1755, Yale University Library. Yale University Library. 
Yale University. Franklin wrote the essay in 1751. Let's get it. Let's, let, let's get the dismount to this essay. And since detachments of English from Britain sent to America, detachments of English from Britain sent to America will have their places at home so soon supplied and increased so largely here. Why should the Palatine Boers, B-O-O-R-S, right, you put it together, be suffered to swarm into our settlements? Hmm, boar, sound like a pig, right? Sound like swine, right? Why, why should this swine have to swarm into our settlements and by herding together, Establish their language and manners to the exclusion of ours. The indigenous people have language and manners different than us. Oh no. Why should Pennsylvania, founded by the English, become a colony of aliens? Who will shortly be so numerous as to Germanize us instead of our anglifying them? Germanize, right? Because you know Germany is swarthy. He's going to tell you Germany is black. So don't Germanize us. Don't black us. We don't mind putting on black face, though. But these swarthy black Germans, oh boy, we need to anglify them with an excellent new tune, right? Samuel Seawall selling a Joseph. Love to let us find the truth. Oh, these, these people got an ancient love song, said Samuel Seawall in the 1700s. We're going to give them an excellent new tune and take away their ancient love song. Because they're Germanizing us. Let's go. And they will never adopt our language or customs any more than they can acquire our complexion. Didn't they just uh, alter their complexion? Hundreds of them in the streets. Which leads me to add one remark. That the number of purely white people in the world is proportionally very small. Wait a minute. Because they have us thinking we're the minority. Well, which one can it be? I mean, shit ain't changed that much since 1700. You can't tell me these white people went from being very proportionally very small to the majority in a couple hundred years. They don't have a birth rate like that. They don't have a birth rate like that. Man, I'm just talking about a 1751 essay by Benjamin Franklin. Let's go. The number of pure white people in the world is proportionally very small. All Africa is black. You hear me? Listen up. He's, he's, he's going he's gonna to call out names. All Africa is black or tawny, which is what? Dark. Brown, copper color. So all Africa is black or tawny. Asia is chiefly tawny. Oh, this is what Tawny looked like. Is this what Tawny look? Is this what Tawny look like? Let's see if we can get some real Tawnies here. Because these people want to even hijack Tawny. But this is the Tawny. This is from Tawny Chapman. 
Can they truly hijack the Tony? Is this Tony? Oh, you put copper next to Tawny. You start getting a little closer. What indigenous group looks like this with these dark, darker copper to the brighter copper? We're just talking Tawny. This is a Tawny copper crinkle. Then we start getting into, into the coppers, right? The copper colored tribes, right? The copper colored tribes, right? This, what they call dark brown, this is tawny. What they call black, I mean. They're saying is 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 bliggity black, right? But then they say tawny. They say, ah, oh, it's not quite as black. Let's go, man. I mean, we in the mind of a hijack. Benjamin Franklin. All Africa is black or tawny. Asia chiefly tawny. Alright, America exclusive to the newcomers, which are who? The pure whites. Is holy so. Not a little bit. Not the majority. Holy so. Holy like completely. Holy like divine. Divinely complete. They are absolutely what? Black or tawny. 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 We're just talking tawny. I mean, come on, man. You know, you know what I'm saying. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. So we have all of America is this tawny or black. Asia is tawny or black. What? And in Europe, the Spaniards, Spain. We just saw the Spain blackface, right? The Spaniards, the Italians, the French, the Russians, and the Swedes are generally of what we call a swarthy complexion. Hold on. Swarthy complexion. I mean, pictures worth a thousand words. Oh, look at they put. Look what they did. Look what they did. Oh, got it. Got it. You keep going, you're going to see these darker people, right? They try to still put they, I mean, you know this ain't swarthy, right? Man, they try, they try. But you know swarthy when you see swarthy. Was Viking King half done the black? Something, something. All right, this is Wesley Snipes, obviously, all right? It may be black hair or swarthy complexion, even if you somehow had Moorish blood. Is the OP suggesting Wesley Snipes would be a good choice to portray this Viking king? Uh-oh. Moorish blood, right? Oh, you're just talking about swarthy blood, huh? Naga blood, huh?
You know what I mean? How many examples do we really need, I guess, right? So you can see what the picture of the world really looks like. So when we talk Preston John, we got orientation, and we know what the world is really looking like. So when you say you got a black, so-called black man, who's the king in 1100s and 1200s, who's the emperor of the world, and you see these people putting on blackface today with, with, with crowns on the on their uh, costumes, whatever, you know what they're imitating, the swarthy. You know what they're imitating? The nobles. And whatever war we got going on got nothing to do with them. Or it doesn't. And in Europe, the Spaniards. So we got from Benjamin Franklin. Follow me now. All of America is black or tawny. Or copper color. Asian. Chiefly tawny. America, exclusive to the newcomers, is wholly so. Copper color, copper color nagas found here by the European, right? And in Europe, the Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what we call swarthy. Can't make this shit up. Swarthy. All right, this is the Scottish. <coughs> We're talking Scotia, Princess Scotia, the, the swarthy Princess Scotia, daughter of the Hebrew Pharaoh. So America, swarthy, Spain, all damn near all Europe, Italy, France, Russia, Russia, Rus, Rus. Rusha, Ruse, the Ruse, are what? Swarthy. Preston John is what? Swarthy. King David is what? Swarthy. How many more? How many more royals must you see? How many more royals must you see? How many more royals? How many more royals? Before you ask the, the main question. Did a black man discover the fountain of you? <laughs> Alright man, let's get to this comic book drop man by AD man. But remember man, alright. All of Africa is black or tawny. Asia is tawny. Dark people, copper people, copper colored people. Swarthy, right? America, holy so, not half. All of America is swarthy. Europe, Asia, uh, Spain. And in Europe, Spain, Italy, France, and the Russians and the Swedes are what we call a swarthy complexion. And the Germans also. Don't Germanize us. Don't Germanize us. Well, the Germans are swarthy. Looking like this. Looking like that. The Saxons only accepted with the English make the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. On the face of the earth. There's only a little bit of white people that y'all claiming to. Two uh two tribes of the Saxons and the English, and I don't think y'all can claim them. I don't even think you can claim that. So who are you and where did you come from? Since you got nothing to do with the face of the earth. I mean, yeah, you might be waking up to all kind of truth. But you better choose up. I could wish their numbers were increased. All right, man, you read the rest of this, man. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's even crazier, man. Is what's going on in the drop, drop chat. Because AD got the drop. I just want to pull this up quickly, man. Because we're talking fantastic things, so why not go crazy? Why not go crazy? 
why not put Preston John in the center of all Marvel comic comics, all Marvel a animations? You got the Black Panther, you got Wolverine, Iron Man, Captain America, Thor, Spider Man, and Preston John. Oh, look how they did the priest king, man. Look how they did him, man. Come on, man. Stop playing, man. Now they want to play, play. Now you want to play, play. You want to show us what you've done? There you go. What have you done? Oh, let they cut the face off. I want to show us what they've done to this man. You guys should be ashamed of yourself. Look at this man. Made him a hijack. But in every bit of, you know, necromancy. Because that's all they do when they try to do an image like this. And they change up the abilities. And they change this guy up to try to be weak. And try to be a dark villain. Same thing to do with our dragons. They switch it up to be a villainous, evil demon thing. When the serpent is the fox to the indigenous mind. The serpent is the dog. The serpent is the coyote in the indigenous tales. That's the deceiver. That's the trickster. The fox. The dog-headed man. If you're thinking indigenously. What have they done with our dragons to put fear in the hearts of the Navi? What have they done with Preston John? Not the AD, man. History, check this out, man. Dane Whitman in the body of Eobar Ger Garrington. Uh, a counter this crusader named Preston John battling Muslim warriors. <laughs> So what you need to know is that it was a more on more war going on. Preston John. Let's just look. You know, let's just not even be fancy. Let's just put Preston John in. We ain't going to be fancy about it. I just I didn't put Negro, I didn't put black man. What do you see? What do you see? Another Naga with a crown and a fro? Oh he must be he must be this. He must be that. You don't know this man. Stop bearing false witness. You don't know this man. Just stop it, man. Stop being silly. Now you're being silly. You don't know this man. What do you know about this man? Does this cross look alike? This cross? Are these Christians? Man. All right, man. What do you know about your royal past? Because in this comic book thingy, you know, this, this comic book situation. On marvel.wiki.com. Love the AD. This Preston John was battling other Moors. More means great. Just like Mongo means great, great ones. The Black Knight helped John overcome his attacker. So, did the Black Knight help John or was John the actual Black Knight? Preston 
Does this cross? Does this Templar cross look anything like this? The Hebrew tie. And when we talk knights, are we just talking Prester John? Do you see the knight, the sword on the horse? Same man, same Templar, love to the Templar, same mysterious Oriental, is a knight. Now how do they apply this knighthood? Instead of him being a knight, there's a black knight, there's a black knight that helped John. The black knight helped John overcome his attack and brought him to the crusade camp. Then they prevented an assassination on Richard the Lionheart. Now this is a part of what they say actually happened. That Preston John, you know what I'm saying, may have, we don't know, may have helped fight against or helped Richard Lionheart. But let's go, let's go. Because what was Richard Lionheart fighting? What does his lineage go to when we talk about the Scottish the Scottish, the Scotia, the Scotia, the Roots. What were they doing in Scotia? After the Crusades, John traveled the world until he found the Isle of Avalon, huh? Now you gonna have to apply this Avalon, this 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 other world, right? With what Shambhala, you know, Amazon. You could put all kind of things there. There he gained the evil eye. Y'all might think I'm crazy, but what does this have to do with dragons? What does the evil eye have to do with the dragon that he gained? Because right? if you go to the 1828 Webster Dictionary, oh yeah, I mean, it could mean all kinds of things. It could mean your classic winged serpent. Remember, serpent either means a snake or a dragon. Snake or dragon. We're going to get into the dragon drive. I mean, obviously, we're going right back in it to make sure there's clarity all across the plane. Of what we see when we research this fiery shooting meteor. Oh, it's imaginary, right? What is a dragon? According to the 1828 Webster Dictionary. A fierce, violent person. A fierce, violent person will... Who would be fierce and who would be violent to who? Because the hijack is writing this definition. So it must be a fierce or violent person, male or female, to the hijack. If you're fierce or violent, according to the 1828 American Webster Dictionary, if you're fierce or violent to oppression, if you're fierce or violent to an invasion, if you're fierce or violent to the hijack colonizer, that means you're a fierce or violent person. You're a male or female. This man or woman is a dragon. Body bag, Danny. Body bag for the illusion. But if we just go back to etymology, we talk dragon, dragon, dragon. And we want to know about this evil eye. All right, dragon, dragoon. All right, this animal common to conceptions, all this stuff. All right, cool. Huge serpent. All right, cool, cool. Got it. Leviathan. Got it. Giant sea fish. Sea fish. A sea fish. Got it. All right. All right. To see clearly. We're talking about an evil eye, right? 
But does this so-called evil eye, does it just mean that you see clearly? Evil, right? To be visible, I have seen clear light, okay. Information, all right. Perhaps the literal sense is the one with the deadly glance. Uh-oh, boss. So a dragon is also, along with seeing clearly, when you see clearly, you have a deadly glance to who? Who would your glance be deadly to? A fierce, violent person. This man or woman is a dragon. So whoever you're being fierce or violent to is who you have a deadly glance at. And here they'll just probably call it an evil eye. Khan. So you see clearly, right? You see clearly. You have a natural fierce ferocity against the invader in a hijack. And I suppose you might even have a deadly glance at the hijack. The one with the deadly glance because you do see clearly. You know you're being invaded. You see clearly. So you might look at them quite deadly when you see them slaughtering you. Because remember, this dragon ain't fighting you, boss. It's fighting with you, boss. It's a natural resource of the earth. It's angelic frequency, boss. That's why they must slay the dragon. They always must slay the dragon. King Arthur must slay the dragon. To do what? Gain life? Whose side are you on? You're going to have to choose, man. You want to fight them both? Psalms 18. Let's get it. Do you have a deadly glance? Do you have what they would call an evil eye? As a plague seemed to wipe out the citizens of Avalon, John prepared to sit upon the seat of survival, which would place him in suspended animation. You gotta recon this suspended animation next time, man. But, I mean, you got some of this drop, man. I mean, you know, you got this guy named Kane trying to get John to join him. As a result of the battle, John was sent to the past. <coughs> Some, let me get some of this great a uh, uh, sweet ginger root. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Got it. Let's go. So John was sent into the past. He attempted to manipulate events in the past, advising the Frankish, Frankish king to battle Vikings. Now, we can do this all day. But this guy gets sent to the past. He's in suspended animation, right? He's immortal. Perhaps he even has the fountain of youth. He gets put in suspended animation. He gets sent, to, sent into the past, all right? He attempted to manipulate events in the past, advising a Frankish king to battle Vikings. Stop. Why would Prester John be on the side of the Franks? Love to Jesse Ben.
Lost Tribes of Andros. We'll get back in there. We'll get back in it. Lost Tribes of Andros. We'll get back in it. We'll get back in it. Jesse Ben got the drop. Let's just get her, you know, let's go right there, man. This is from the writers of the tripwatch.com. It shows that the Rus are US, right? Or R E W S or R U S or R O S. It shows that the Rus were part and parcel with the Franks. Wait, what did Benjamin Franklin just say? About the Rus, the Russians, the Russians are swarthy. So the Russians are black. The Russians are black people. The Russians are black people. I, I got to say it in a language you can break your spell. All of Russia's black, man. Black men, black women. All of Europe, Spain, Italy, France is black folk, man. Swede, Sweden, all that is black territory with black people. Which is why they're putting on black face. As well as where? French. The French. The French are the Franks. Frankish. French. Frankish. And what's with these Franks? It shows from Trip Watch. It shows that the Rus was part and parcel. Or they got down with. Or they were tribed up with the Franks. The same Franks, the same French that are swarthy. So you had swarthy on both sides of the melanated frequency war. All the way going back to Atlantis and Mu and all that. Egypt, Hebrews, all, all melanated. Moabites, Israelites, all melanated. All swarthy, all black or tawny. All copper colored nagas. We're talking complexion. <clears throat> and the French, the French are tribed up with the Rus, informing the Knights Templar. So these swarthy, swarthy complexion black men, right? Black men and women are tribed up. They're fighting against the so called. You know, perhaps Edomites, perhaps whatever you want to call Rome, even though they're hijacking that title, they're fighting against the Jacobites, they're fighting against, you know what I'm saying, King James's folks. It's a melanated war going on, it's a frequency war. They form the Knights Templar to protect the secrets of, what, Solomon's Temple, the Ark of the Covenant, all those secrets are protected. By the original knights. The original knights. The original knights. We just talking about Preston John. The original knights. We just talking about the mysterious oriental leader. What? Wong Kong, Preston John. We're gonna get back into Ken Knights. We just having fun. We just getting started, y'all. I just wanted to start like this. Let y'all know I'm serious about this. It's what I do. We're enjoying this together. We're just talking the knights. We're just talking the Templar cross. Not the Christian, Roman, Catholic. Nigga, the Templar Tau, which is the Hebrew what? Tau. Come on, man. Let's just do it like this, man. Let's go to Google and put in Hebrew Tau. Let's just do it like this. And we want the original, not the modern Yiddish. We want the original Tau. This 
This is the LF. This is the tab. Look at this tab. Look at this tab. Look at this tab. It's all about the Hebrew tab. And this is the Rus and the Franks or the French or the Swarthies forming the Knights Templar together. It says this supports my findings that the Franks and the Russians were the same stock of people. The red ones. Talking about the land of Rus, the red ones, part and partial with the Franks, the red ones. Who are we today? We are the same people. Tau. 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 Hebrew. This is not a Roman Catholic cross. This is a Tau. This is a Tau. Tau. Uh. Tau. 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 All right. All right, man. You got to dig deeper, man. Let's go. So, you know, love to AD. We just talked to Preston John. It's part 39. All right. Part 39. Let's go. So this is why Preston John, he attempted to manipulate events in the past, advising a Frankish king, French, Frankish, swarthy king. Right? The Franks and the Rus are part and parcel. The Franks and the Rus. The Rus were part and parcel with the Franks. They tried that with the Franks, the Russians, to form the Knights Templar. Let's go. Let's go. We're just talking. Press the John, a legend and his sources. Love the Tide battle. We're going to get some more Tide drop if we have time too as well, man. Come on, man. We're having a good time. We're just getting warmed up. You know, we have an excellent wave, an excellent flow. And welcome, man. If you're here for the first time, welcome. Let's go. We do it for you. Right, so he talked about all this Black Knight helped him, and he went back in the past, teamed up with the Franks, advising the Frankish king to battle the Vikings. He was stopped by Thunderstrike, who was Thor, so now you got Thor popping up, and all this stuff, and then something happens with his eye, man, and all this, you know what I mean, you, you get it, man, you get it, man. Love to AT, man, let's go. Because we was talking about something, man. We was talking about something, man. We was talking about the Kenites, man. Hey, hi, uh, man. We, we got some great script. I want to go right back in the Kenites, man. Right back in the Kenites, man. And then we're going to get a couple things, man. We're going to get some more things, man. I want you to remember something. Get in the drop library. Because again, so much is in here. I just put up a couple things on. Remember he was helping Richard of Lionheart, right? It said what? He came to the aid of Richard the Lionhearted, right? To prevent an assassination attempt on Richard. Lionhearted. King of England, all right, all that stuff. Who are you, Richard? Who are you? So we know he is visiting lands from Scotland to France, right? 
He comes from a long line of kings, from Scotland to France, right? These are the Scottish, right? The Rus, right? The Rus, the Franks, part and parcel. Let's go. So there was an alliance going on already when it came to the Templar. When it came to protecting the secrets of the temple. Richard is often depicted as having been the favorable son of his mother, his father, and Jeviv Norman. The Normans were also allies with President John at that time. And the great-grandson of William the Conqueror, right? So this is William the Conqueror's great-grand, great-grandbaby. When you watch Braveheart and you see Mel Gibson, we do this with Scotland. He's William the Conqueror now. He's playing a brother. When you dig on William the Conqueror, then you're getting into the real war that's going on. And you connect this war with the same Mongol situation. Now we're going to get back into the Kenites, the Kanites, the Khanate. We're going to talk about Cain some more, man. Let's go, man. <laughs> we're going to talk about Moshe, Kush, Ethiopia. All this connects, man, when you researching Preston John is the only figure you can start digging on and connect all this stuff from Scottish history Britain Europe all that stuff man to indigenous Mexica history you know what I'm saying connect that with fucking like comic book shits you know what I'm saying <laughs> everything starts connecting with these knights man all right all these knights that's popping off man so all of it's connected when you start digging on who this priest king is rocking this towel, right? Rocking this towel. All right, all right, we clear. Oh, look at the towel. Yeah, man, we clear, right? Okay. Sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta get clear. Man. So yeah, you know, this William the Conqueror, uh, Battle of Hastings, we gotta get back into this whole period. This is the pics, this is all this stuff going down. In Scotland, all right. We're not the only ones looking for Preston John, though. I mean, don't get it twisted. There's a Preston John monument pulled a link up in Portugal. One of Preston John and the other of a Portuguese navigator. <laughs> Any questions? Everybody's looking for this brother. Everybody's looking for the night. Everybody. Is looking for the Ethiopian. I mean, honestly, everybody's looking for Preston John. Did a black man discover the fountain view? Why are they looking for his territory? What are they trying to find? Because everybody's searching 1145 to 1645. Add it up. Now, either they saying this like the Templar are saying, either they trying to tell us that 1145 is 1645. Or they was looking for this man for 500 years because maybe he had the fountain of you. Maybe when we dig on the script about Preston John, 
rising up, being our shepherd, being the shepherd of Israel forever. Maybe it got something to do with the fountain of you. Maybe he's immortal. You know, maybe they just couldn't find this man, which lets you know he wasn't on that side of the world. And they just kind of settled in when they got to America. Then the search discontinued. We don't need to search no more. Search is over. We are chilling with the copper color naga found here by the European. Alright, man. You got the drop. You click the links. They're in the drop, drop chatter. Chat to chat, chat. This superhero they searching for. You're looking for the priest king, the superhero. The superhero. He's like, well, hey, <laughs> I've been called worse things. <laughs> All right, man. Let's go. Having too much fun with this. Let's talk Ken Knights. Let's get back. <coughs> All, right. All right, let's get back at it, man. Hold up, man. Don't get mad at me, man. I've been I've been doing a lot of talking lately. We we we've been having a lot of conversations, you and me. Tell me to rest my voice. I got too much talking to do, man. It's been it's been too long. All right, so click this link, man. The Trails of the Sons of Re Rakal. We got this last time. Johanna Dobbs' ancestor appears to go back 600 years. It is a story of the Medianites or the Canaanites. Non-Israelites who were adopted into Israel. So they were adopted into Israel. Keep this in mind. Also keep in mind what we got in Genesis 4. Most high, right? Curse Cain said, "Man, you, you gonna have to go." Cain said, "Come on, man, they gonna they gonna slay me, man." Genesis four fifteen says, "And Hawa said to him, Therefore, whoever slays Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold." So the Most High still showed love to Cain personally, and perhaps he also showed love to a particular seed of Cain as well. So he put a mark on Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So this mark is protecting Cain himself or some of his remnant from being slayed. You know, interesting. You know, just interesting stuff, man. Let's go to these Canaanites, man. So Exodus 3 and 1, Moses was keeping the flock. Of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses had escaped from Egypt after killing the Egyptians. So we got into the book of Jasher that this 40 years as a shepherd, he was 40 years as the king of Cush, working for his father-in-law. Right, then he came back in the book of Jasher, his, his father-in-law threw him in the dungeon for 10 years. Then when he saw he was still alive, Moses went and got the crystal staff, right, the sapphire staff, and led the people out of Egypt. But who did he take with him? Moses was preparing to enter the promised land in Numbers 10 and 29. He invited Habo, son of Jethro, Reuel, the Midianite, or the Kenite, right, to go with Israel. So they were what? Adopted into Israel. These Kenites. Judges 1 and 16. This is the separate tribe of Moses. Call it the 13th tribe, if you will. The descendants of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up with the people of Israel and settled in the God. <coughs> you got Hebrew the Kenite in Judges 4 and 11, separated from the clan, the descendants of Hobab, and pitched his tent, pitched his tent in the far north in Kadesh Hamath. You got Judges 4 and 17, Caesarea the Kenite, Canaanite commander, escaped from the battle of Baruch. And Deborah and took refuge in the tents of Heber the Canaanite. All right, 
Jael Heber's wife killed Cicero with the tent peg while he slept. So they weren't fucking with these Canaanites, man. <laughs> All right, when Saul destroyed the Amalekites, he warned the Canaanites away in 1 Samuel. So in 1 Samuel, Saul was still, you know, rocking with these Canaanites. Canaanites. 1 Chronicles 2, 55. These are the Canaanites who came from Hamath, the father of the house of Rechab. All right, Rechab. All right, all right, so it goes on, man. Then, of course, you got the scripture we got before in Jeremiah 35 with these Rechabites of the temple. All right, in Jeremiah, Jeremiah was ordered by God to summon several of the sons of Rechabites, the Kenites, because they are the tribes of Moshe. They are the nomadic tribes too exalted for territory. And what it said in Lost Tribes and Promised Lands, Root of Sinners, page 29 of the PDF, page 46 of the book. <coughs> this is from Eldad the Danite. This is Eldad's account. All right. But he's talking to John, but he's calling call him Moshe. Here, rather, in Eldad's description of him. This is also the tribe of Moses, our just master, which is called the tribe of Yannis because it fled from idol worship and clung to the fear or the obedience of Awah, the creator. These are Levites of the tribes of Moses in the priesthood, and though not all of them are necessarily prophets or priests, a whole nation of them implies an exalted religiosity or divine nature. Indeed, they were too exhausted for the possession of territory in biblical times. They're not one of the twelve tribes among whom Joshua divided up the land of Canaan. They are therefore not one of the ten lost tribes. They are their own tribe, their own tribe. And I believe, according to our investigation, that that's leading us right into the Kenites, right into the Rechabites. Or at least, you know, that these Kenites or Rechabites are leading us to where the tribes of Moses were. You know what I mean? So we can track the tribes of Moses by tracking the Kenites and the Rechabites through scripture. Stuff that was, you know, taken out and misplaced. Because when you're digging on Moses, you're definitely digging on Preston John because you're digging on a priest king. You know, like I said, you don't know what Wong Kong we might be talking about in any document. We're just pulling stuff up, seeing what matches, seeing what connects. So everyone's calling themselves the priest king, but there's only a few that we recognize. Such as Moshe, such as David, such as Hawashua, Joshua. You dig? There's only a few that can truly call themselves priest king. Khans, Wong Kong. And you got a lot of fakery like Angus Khan, right? Let's see if this comes up, man. Uh, you can always go in the, in, in, in the search box on 42 to drop. You know, if you're wondering if we have this or that. I wonder if we put up a um, this mural, this picture that we had. Oh, uh, there we go. See, I mean, you don't know what you're going to find when you put it in the search box at 432 to drop. Let's go, man. So you got some art drop of Genghis Khan depicted as a black man. So anyone trying to tell you that the Tartars were white people and Genghis Khan was this redhead, you're following deception. And wisdom ain't rocking with you if you don't see this melanated wall for what it is. If you can't see that this is a melanated war on war, more on more. And Genghis Khan looks like this. This is the shrine of Genghis Khan. You see this black man? Is he fat? No, he's a skinny, slim brother. 
in the original picture, these were all black people too. This is supposed to be a ruse, Michael something. But they iconoclast this, look up iconoclasm, they start making these people white, but they still kept Genghis his original flow, you know what I mean? Down here it says Prince Michael of Chernoff, a ruse, a Russian. Well, you know he can't be a ruse or Russian when Benjamin Franklin is telling you in 1751 that all of Russia or Russians are swarthy. We know what swarthy look like, man. Stop playing, man. Stop the play play. Oh, there we go. So it says, Batu Khan stabbed him to death for his refusal to do obeisance or to worship the Genghis Khan shrine in the pagan ritual. Note that Genghis Khan is depicted as a black man by the painting of a Russian painter, V.S. Smirnov, in 1883. So this painting's done in 1883. Whether this is the original or not, again, this can't be Batu Khan as the grandson of this black man, right? So they changed a lot of these complexions up and people up down here from the original painting. They didn't want to see the full picture, but you can at least get a clue by looking at this black man, Genghis Khan. In 1883, Genghis Khan is depicted as a black man. 1883, so you're going to have to choose up and choose your reality. No one's talking about this because this unravels the whole pie. Is this the son or the grandson or the nephew of this other black man? Because the major war, the more and more war that happened in 1202, 1203, 1200s was against this man, this black man, versus this black man. This is the war, people. This war changed everything. There are two different sides of this melanated coin. Genghis Khan versus Prester John. Prester John versus Genghis Khan, or more appropriately, Genghis Khan versus King David. Because Genghis Khan then started calling himself King David. And we're going to get a lot more of that out of Lost, out of Preston John and Legend and Sources by Keegan Brewer. Love to type out. Do you think it's play play? I saw. Do you think it's play play? That this David or this David went to war against this black ass Genghis Khan from Moab or Moab, however you want to read it. We got a lot of digging to do. We got nothing but water. I don't even got time to do nothing else but swim in this water with you. Because what's more important than seeing reality of the melanated war? Oh, they want their superheroes, right? But the real Captain America, right? The real Superman is Preston John. This was the war going down. Look at his vassals, right? So when we talk Kenites, they were so pure as this tribe, this tribe of Moshe, that they didn't even, uh, you know, they, they made an oath with their father, Rekab. Now, Rekab could also be Re'uel. You know, Rhett Cobb and Rhett Ruel, but let's go. Since we would drink no wine for Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father commanded us. You shall not drink wine. You shall not sow seed. You shall not plant or have vineyard. 
but you shall live in tents all your days, that you may live many days in the land where you sojourn. We have obeyed the voice of Job, Nadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he commanded us, to drink no wine in our days, ourselves, our wives, our daughters, our sons, and not to build houses to dwell in. We have no vineyard or field or seed. We have lived in tents. We have no vineyard not to build houses to dwell in. The tribe of Moses, the priesthood. They are too exalted for possession of territory in biblical times. So when we talk about Moshe, Moses, Moses married a Kenite wife. We're talking Judges 1 and 16. Then we're talking about this connection right here with this Moshe, these tribes of Moses that are too exalted for possession of territory. And who are the Kenites? Who are the Rechabites? <coughs> Let's go. Jeremiah used it, their testimony as a living testimony to Israel. The Rechabites had lived an austere life in obedience to their forefather while Israel refused to listen to the prophets whom Hawah had sent persistently to warn them away from sin. So they were rocking at a higher frequency than Israel at this time. So Jeremiah used their testimony as a living testimony. We just talking about testimonies. I appreciate y'all for digging on mine. Because we all have one. Let's go. Who are the Rechabites? A reconstruction of this history is that there was a godly line of people that began with Jethro, Midianite, Kenite, who was Moses' father-in-law, and a spiritual advisor to Moses, the man of Hawaii. Well, we do know that Jethro, or Reuel, right? Or Jethro, or Reuel, as the book of Jasher calls it, After he put Moses in a dungeon for 10 years, it's the book of Jashir, chapter 77, and Reuel commanded Moses to be brought out of the dungeon, so they shaved him and changed his prison garments and ate bread. Pull it up. I know it's small. And afterward, Moses went into the garden of Reuel, so he went into the garden of Jethro, Reuel, the Kenite, or Rechabite. Let's go which was behind the house and he, and he there prayed to Hawa who, was, who had done mighty wonders for him. So Moses prayed because he got released from jail after 10 years for doing nothing. And it was that while he prayed, he looked opposite to him and behold, a sapphire stick was placed in the ground which was planted in the midst of the garden. Uh-oh. So it's not just a staff, right? It's a crystal staff, sapphire. And he approached the stick and looked, and behold, the name of Hawa was engraved. They're all written and developed upon the stick. Remember uh, Ezekiel 37, take two sticks, put them together. This would be one nation in, in your hand. And then David will be the shepherd over them all. And he read it and stretched forth his hand and he plucked it like the forest tree from the thicket and the stick was in his hand. And this is the stick with which all the works of Hawa were performed after he had created heaven and earth and all the host of them, seas, rivers, and all their fish. So this same crystal Sapphire or emerald staff. We hear emerald staff for Preston John. We're hearing sapphire stick. You're thinking about King Arthur, right? Camelot pulling the sword out the stone, right? How close is this to reality? This is in the book of Jasher. Nobody's reading this to you. Chapter 77. So we know that this entire authorian situation of Preston John. This King Arthur situation <coughs> is all popping off from the legend of Preston John. 
What did he even say in the intro? That these Prester John studies, right? We're talking authorian, author, king author. But there was another relatively new school of British history. See, they got it in quotations because it's fake. Headed by writers like Geoffrey of Monmouth, who's creating fake history. Which created a false genealogy of kings through the line of a certain king author. So we're talking about pulling a sword out of a stone. And they're telling you to your face. When these Preston John studies are in Harvard. That this King Arthur's whole situation is false genealogy, so who's the real King Arthur? These histories were to be abhorred for their obvious falsehoods. According to William, it was historian's duty, William, to prevent the spread of such fallacious nonsense being propagated by the likes of Joffrey, a man who had uncontrolled passion for life. Joffrey's methodology was also suspect for in writing his history. All he was doing was taking up the infantile stories of British folklore. <clears throat> so all he was doing was taking the stories of the legends he's always heard of and turning them into a false genealogy and false history of Britain connected to King Arthur and Camelot, which is really Kalelus in America. Here we go. Got, got some great readings coming out of that book, Kalelus. We got some great reading that already came out of the Forbidden Histories of America, although they, they took, YouTube took the entire series, seven, eight, nine, whatever parts it was, over copyright infringement, because we're reading excerpts of an author's work for criticism, criticism purposes, because we decided to criticize this man's work, he didn't like that we were bringing the black, so-called black element into the story. So he had all his information uh, pulled for copyright infringement when we were just doing what? Teaching, reporting, commenting, and criticizing using scholarship and research. How did we infringe on your copyright? We didn't write a book, fool. We're just reading parts of your book. And that's infringing on copyright? What happened to fair use? I thought we can criticize for teaching and research and scholarship. Oh, it must not be scholarship, huh? Preston John must not be scholarship, huh? So all this Joffrey Mama does did was take this King Arthur and, and use the actual foundational legend to flip the story, adding them adding to them considerably from his own imagination, cloaking them with honorable title of history and embellishing them in the Latin tongue. Remember the Latinus who was reading about in the book of Jasher, connected to Ham. At the end of this lengthy refutation of Joffrey and his new school of authorian history. So this whole British history is based on a false genealogy of authorian quote history which is really about Prester John, which shouldn't shock you, because Benjamin Franklin told you all of Europe is damn near swarthy, and it's all about this black, so-called black man, this kingdom of Israelites, these so-called black people. William poses the following question, is he dreaming of another world, a new world, <coughs> an old world? Containing infinite kingdoms, infinite kingdoms. What does the Papal Bull Doom Diverses 1452 say? Subjugate these Nagas, these Saracens, right? But what are they even calling you? What are they even calling you in the Andrews Crest? They're calling this man a Saracen's head. But we're only talking about the lost tribes of Israel's identity. So they'll throw the Saracen title. And anything that looks like you, they'll call it a Saracen. 
the call of the more, right? We're just talking the tribes of Israel. We're just talking the Scots, the Bruce. We're just talking Genghis Khan. Let's go. Let's do it like this. Is he dreaming of another world, boss, containing infinite kingdoms in which those things which he recounted earlier actually happened? This is a question that must also be asked of the Prester John legend, the figure of Prester John, a so-called Christian priest, right? Dies to hijack. And King Ka David, who ruled over a marvelous Oriental Empire, held a firm grip on the Middle Ages, just like the legend of King Arthur. So King Arthur, Arthurian, so-called history, their entire fake chronology, is all connected to Prester John. The Black Knight, right? The Black Knight. The Black Oriental. So we talk about these Kenites that are rocking with the priest king. A godly line of people that began with Jethro or the Midian Kenite. But remember, in the book of Jasher, Jethro had the sapphire stick. Now, how'd the sapphire stick get there? And then we're going to get this dismount, man. Let's go. And it was while Moses prayed, he looked opposite to him, and behold, a sapphire stick was placed in the ground, which was planted in the midst of the garden. Jethro's garden, Reuel's garden, right? And he approached the stick, and he looked, and behold, the name of the Lord God of hosts was engraved thereon, written and developed upon the stick. And he read it and stretched forth his hands and he plucked it like a forest tree from the thicket and the stick was in his hand. So he just picked it up out the ground. It was grounded like a current, right? It was grounded. And he pulled it out just like King Arthur, right? The sword out of the stone. This even gets more murky into the author. King Arthur, Joffrey of Monmouth, what they call this again, a, a fake history, all right? Fake genealogy. Verse 41, Book of Jasher, chapter 77. And he read it and stretched forth his hand, and he plucked it like a forest tree from the thicket, and the stick was in his hand. And this is the stick with which all the works of Hawa were performed. After he had created heaven and earth, it's the same staff from the beginning. Where is it now? And all the host of them, seas, rivers, and their fish were all connected to this staff. And when Hawa had driven Adam from the Garden of Eden, he took the stick in his hand and he went and tilled the ground from which he was taken. So Adam was rocking with the crystal, sapphire stick. Adam had the staff. Who else had it? And the stick came down to Noah and was given to Shem and his descendants. Noah had the staff, the sapphire staff, the emerald staff. Shem had the staff. Shem's descendants had the staff. Until it came to the hand of Abram. Abraham. Abraham was rocking with the staff. And when Abraham had given all he had to his son Isaac, 
He gave him the staff. Isaac had the staff. And when Jacob had fled to Padan Aram, he took it in his hand. Jacob had the staff. And he, re he returned to his father. He had not left it behind him, so he still had it. And when he went down to Egypt, he took it into his hand and gave it to Joseph. Now Joseph had the staff, right? The king of, king of Egypt. One portion above his brethren. For Jacob had taken it by force from his brother Esau. <coughs> so apparently, <coughs> you know, that whole birthright situation was all about this staff. And after the death of Joseph, the nobles of Egypt came into the house of Joseph, and the stick came into the hand of Reuel the Midianite. So they kind of went from this to this, but somehow this Jethro, Reuel, Moses' father in law, the Kenite, the Midianite, the Kenite, he got the staff from the nobles of Egypt after Joseph died. Now, that's a long story, but there's a connection that we got to put together. Because remember, Reuel put Moses in the dungeon for 10 years after Moses told him the story about getting an honorable discharge from the Cushites after, after being the king of Cush for 40 years. And Reuel, you know, teams up with some of his old associates and says, oh, man. Moses is against my people. I got to put him in a dungeon. So was Moses, according to Reuel, against the nobles of Egypt? Since Moses was against Egypt, Reuel being, you know, maybe part and parcel with the nobles of Egypt at this time. Is this why he put Moses in the dungeon for 10 years? And only Zipporah was checking on him. Because nobody was checking for Moshe. Now the stick came into the hand of Reuel, the Midianite, the Kenite. And when he went out of Egypt, he took it in his hand and planted it in his garden. So that's when he put it in the garden. And all the mighty men of the Kenites. <coughs> now before the spelling the Kenites, K-E-N. Now they're spelling it K-I-N, which is going to connect to the Mongol, so-called Mongol history. Possibly, I mean, we're investigating. Possibly, let's go. This is our investigation. This is Preston John, number 39. We're on a warpath, baby. Let go. Alkaline. Let's make our dismount, man. Let's make our dismount, man. So all the mighty men of the Kenites tried to pluck it, and it when they endeavored to get Zipporah his daughter. So he said, "I ain't giving Zipporah to no one unless they can pull this staff out the ground, unless they can pull this sword out the ground." Right, King Arthur style. And all the mighty men of the Canaanites tried to pluck it when they endeavored to get support his daughter, but they were unsuccessful. No one can pull the sword out the stone except Arthur. No one can pull this crystal staff out of the garden, out of the ground. They can't pluck it out unless they have a, a birthright to it. So that stick remained planted in the garden of Red Well until he came, Moses who had the right to it and took it. So he had the right to it. Preston John has, has the right to the crystal staff. The magical crystal staff, right? The magi, right? Verse 51, And when Reuel saw the stick in the hand of Moses, he wondered at it, and he gave him his daughter Zippor for a wife. He said, body bag, man. Obviously, you the man. You the man. You the man. You get the staff. So again, we're just talking Ken Knights, right? You know, you can pull up some 
basic, basic overstanding on some Kush, some some Kushites, some Kushite people, the kingdom of Kush. When you connect this, uh, you know, situation with Moshe, how Moshe was reigning as the king of Kush. And all the children of Cush loved Moses all the days he reigned over him. And in the 40th year of the reign of Moses over Cush, Moses was sitting on the throne. All right, so 40 years. This is before he got put in the dungeon. So when you talk Cush, you're going to have to, at least for investigative purposes, you know, bring in this Hebrew element of Cush. When Moses is the king of Cush for 40 years. So everything about Cush can't be all bad. If Mo if Moses and the Most High is rocking behind Cush for 40 years. At least. You know, everything can't be evil about Cain. But the Most High is still saying, look man, anybody that touch you, I'm going to have to deal with. And I'm going to deal with seven times over. Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. <coughs> I mean, what is it? Either it's this or it's that. But Moses still has a remnant of Cain. I'm not talking about Cain and Ham's son that was cursed. I'm saying Cain. All right. It's a lot we don't know about this Cain. Before we jump to conclusions. You don't want to bear false witness on this Cain. Moses... Most High is still protecting K or Ken or the Ken Knights. Let's go. All right. Let's just bring it back for a second. We know that Moses married a Kenite wife, right? We're talking Zippor. All right, let's go. You remember the record bites. It was rocking in Jeremiah 35, First Chronicles 2. All right, no doubt. We understand that they were specifically interested in the worship of Hawa, and the Chronicle connects them with the Kenites. The Kenites came to Hamath, the father of the house of Rechab. Okay, okay, okay. Got some great drop on Benjamin to do it. All right, all right, all right. Let me just stay the course. Talking about the Kenites, we're also talking about the Karyats, right? Which is connecting us to this Wong Khan, these Khans. The legend of Prester John, otherwise said in India or Ethiopia, was also brought in connection with the Nestorian rulers of the Karyats. There's one thing you need to know about these Nestorians, man. Especially when you talk about Preston John, ruler of the three Indies, man. You got to know about these historians, man. You got to know about these chariots. Even today, they only keep the so-called Old Testament or the Tanakh as divine authority, man. Come on. When it comes to these kins, like the kin knights, rubric keys of Franciscan twelve fifty three is telling you what. And thus they have got it noised or noise. It, it's a popular opinion abroad that the Sartek, Mongol Khan, and the Ken Khan were Christians simply because they treated Christians well. So when we keep calling these people Christians just because they treated Christians well, so to speak, you know, they, they weren't as harsh as, as the Sultan and and the Muslims on them, 
they were looking for these Nestorians, maybe because they were Hebrews and they weren't just slaughtering Christians left and right like the Muslims were at that time. So that's called treating them well and showed them more honor than other people. So because these Mongols, because these Nestorian people called Naaman treated Christians well and showed them more honor, they were also called Christians. This was a, a misbelief, right? Yet, in fact, they were not Christians at all. And his pastors lives Ken Khan. We're talking about the Nestorian pastors, right? The Nestorinis, right? Godly line of people that began with Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. They were non-Israelites who were adopted into Israel. Non-Israelites adopted into Israel. Moses married a Canaanite wife. They were Nestorians, but they were not Christians at all, man. We're going to do a dismount talking about Nestor. Love to my sister Kenya, who dropped some Nestor drop on us, man. So love to Kenya. I know you're watching. Much of high for always surfing the wave. We just talking about Preston John. Found the view. Oh, we're just talking to Ken Knights, the Sapphire Staff. Let's go. Non Israelites, right? Back. Let's do it like this. I'm just talking Nestorini. Oh, if I got some more Kenite drops on there, let's see, let's see. So when you talk Kara Katai, pull up his link, historytoday.com. There's a certain basis of contemporary fact behind the odd story. 1141, same time period, 12th century, right? Medieval, right? Dark Ages, right? The Sultan Sinjar is one of the decisive battles in the history of Central Asia or America. Let's go. Was defeated at Katwan near Samarkand by the Mongol people, the Kara Katai, right? These are Preston John's people, right? Who had recently migrated to Central Asia from their previous home in northern China or Kana. The Kara or Black Katai, because Kara means black, right? Black man. Let's go. Were a branch of the Katans who had ruled over the northern China from 936 to 1122 when they had been dispossessed by another mongrel group called the Kins. So, whatever happened with these infighting, even with some of the Kenites, one branch remained under Ken domination. I'm just making, I'm not just making this Ken up. We're just talking the Ken, the Ken kinds, right? What did it say in the book of Jasher? And all these mighty men of the Kenites, and they spell it K-I-N. So is there a connection between the Mongol Ken? I mean, we're, we're just doing an investigation that's leading us to bringing the scriptures to life, to really proving the scriptures, you know what I'm saying? And you can prove them when you unlock the history of the Dark Ages and so-called Mongol history, because Mongol just means great ones, and they're talking about Israel. They're talking about both sides of the war, the more and more. And that Mongol, Russian, Russian, Russia history. Because you can't talk Mongols without talking Russia or Russia. And this is what Russia really looks like. This is what America looks like. These people are ruling and connected on land territories that's connected. 
and they're flying around on what? Dragons. But let's go. They just see clearly. I mean, these are superheroes. Let's go. So when the Book of Jasher is talking about Ken I's K I N. And we're talking about a branch of the Mongol group, the Ken, K-I-N. We're talking about the Midianite or the Kenite or... Professor John, Noble Ethiopian, right? The three India. Get that candy cone. So many links, man. So many links. <laughs> and is with his people a Christian, but a historian, so they kept having to make this distinction, man. All right, here we go. And then you got in the syst a system of geography popular in scientific or physical, all right, by James Bell, page 110, pull it up. We're talking Mongol tribes, the Tor, Torah, Turkish. When you hear about Turks, you see the name, the T-U is for Torah, because the original Torah, Turkish, are connected to the Torah, the Mongol, the Tartar, the Tortur, let's go. Sometimes the one race prevailed and sometimes the other, but whatever destiny was for the time, Lord of the Ascendant, what are the he or nog, Nognu, the Wiyu, the Ken, or the Mongols. So again, I just want to point out another source. You got these Kenites or this Ken popping up in Mongol history. That's also connected to like the Book of Jashar, the Kenites here. And again, Moses married a Kenite wife. So when we look at the Ken and Mongol history, we're only talking about the Midianites in which some were doing what? Were non-Israelites adopted into Israel? You can pull this link up as well. You know, got a lot of hijacking as well, but this one at least, you know, talks about the Ken Kane connection, right? One of these nations among the Canaanites. <coughs> uh, was the Kenites, which were descendants of Cain, right? Being that Cain was the satanic seed line, all right? He would infect his satanic blood among all these ten nations, and the Kenes, Kenesites were Edomites. So this is why you also hear that Jethro or Reuel was an Edomite. So, you see how these titles can get a little confusing. Are you Edom? Are you Canaan? Are you Cain? Is it all one thing? Let's go. A very mixed population, Amorites, Canaanite, 
Kang, which one? All right. You see, most of the stuff will be case by case. The Ken Knights, they call them Key Knights. Metal Smiths, the name of the Wandering Tribe, Nomadic Tribes, right? So I'm just saying that this title is being put on different people, and sometimes it's being put on Israel. Sometimes it's being put on Edom. Sometimes Cain. Sometimes Canaan. It's case by case, depending on what clan you're talking about at what time, and the perspective of whoever's writing about it. But you know for a fact that you're talking wandering tribes of people associated with the who? Midianites, all right? And later the Amalekites, all right? So now you're connected to the Edom situation. Uh, the Kenites lived in the desert regions of Sinai, Midian, Edom, a Amalek, and Negev. So they lived in all those areas. The Bible first mentions the Kenites as the groups that lived in Canaan. During the time of Abraham, their territory was to be taken by the Israelites in Numbers 24, verse 21 to 22. They were metal craftsmen who have traced their ancestry to Tubal Cain. So is this a fact? Is this for all of them? And if so, are we just talking the same Cain who the Most High says, Hey man, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Anybody slays Cain. Anybody touches Cain, I got your back. Even though you did some evil, evil things according to this story. But, you know, David also slayed a man, right? So, you know, these things seem to have been happening. So, you know, we're just talking two ball, okay? All right. All right. All right. And again, uh, we're talking about the Canaanites being like blacksmiths or they... Um, had to drop, let's see, musical instruments, which Jabal metal work was all Cain, the Smiths. So this is where you get the Smiths. All right, these are Cain. You know, they are the Ken or the, or the Ken, K-I-N, the Ken. So is this Ken any different? This cane or can any different than this can here? These cans or are they different than these Nestorians? Connected to the Karakatai or the Ken Dominion. So you got this link, man. You can dig on it, man. Dig more about these cans. Who are the Ken Knights? It is obvious from all this that the scribes in the house of Israel in the days of the kings were the Kenites. Wait a minute. So are they the cursed seed of Tubal Cain? You're saying this 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 cat right here at Israelelect.com is saying that it is obvious from all this that the scribes in the house of Israel in the days of the kings were the Kenites? Well, Moses did marry a Kenite wife. All right, all right. So were they the scribes? And the title of scribes was kept in the family, so to speak, just as it is in some parts of the world today. So it is obvious that the Israelites allowed them to stay in the land with them because they were Kenite scribes. That were living in Canaan when Israel first came into the land. <coughs> All right. All right. So, you know, there's a few things to dig on with this Ken. Member of Cajun or Cain or Cain, right? They have an etymology here Concordance, Cain, Cain. All right. All right. So, is this a blessed seed of Cain? Is this a is this a seed of Cain that was protected with a mark, a sign, a mark, a sign, a mark? Were they connected with the with the towel, right? A mark. Did they get a mark, a sign? Let's go. Got a couple minutes, man. I'll just do it like this, man. Love to uh, Kenya.
and I'll drop a link down, man, below my Instagram affiliates, man. Alright, man, can y'all drop this link? Breaking down the Nest store. She connected it. With H five three four one. Alright. Nesta. Say strong. Let's go. With not saw a sense of greenness as a striking color, a shoot, a descendant of branch, Nestar, Natsar. Keep, preserve, watchman, besiege, keeper, monuments to guard, watch, watch over, to watch, guard. Natsar, primitive root to guard, in the good sense to protect, maintain, obey. Go. Keeping.